So this week we're talking about seven prophetic words for the battle weary. So if you're going through a battle and you're getting weary, you need to listen to all of these uh, uh, teachings this week. I'm Keith Brown, this is Tack Room Devotional, and once again, this article came from the Elijah List. Now, the Elijah List is a place where people who flow in the gifts of, of prophecy send in articles to give the church a word, okay? So this person writes this uh, for the battle weary, and the first thing we found out on Monday was, again, this is a thus saith the Lord, who do you say that I am? We found out that we must know that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. God. And when that happens, all kinds of wonderful things happen. Like, for instance, the gates of hell can't prevail against you. He gives you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And then whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. There's power that comes when you have the revelation that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Makes me excited. And then on Tuesday, we talked about your weakness does not disappoint God. Why? Because in our weakness, as we found out, he's made strong. He's not worried about your weaknesses. It's, he's worried about the fact that you'll live in your weaknesses rather than live in his strength. Go back and watch that video. Let's, uh, on Wednesday, we talked about the fact that God loves you just the way you are. Just the way you are. He loves you with a love called agape love. He loves you unconditionally, but he also loves you uh, uh, sacrificially. That even when you make a mistake, his blood is enough to satisfy the judgment against that sin. He is wonderful. What a wonderful God. And then today I want to talk to you about two different words. The first word is, I want to help you. Okay, again, this is a thus saith the Lord. God is speaking to you and I because it's a prophetic word. I want to help you. Okay, I'm going to read what this person wrote. It says, I know it's too hard for you, but it's not too hard for me. I want you to, I, I want to help you. I am your helper and I find joy in coming alongside you, sharing my strength, showing you things to come, and giving you the right words to say. I know sometimes things look impossible and you can't see the way out of the, or the way through, but I know the way. His name is Jesus. I'm here to lead and to guide you, so follow me, and the confusion and the stress will give way to clarity and grace. Amen. He says, nothing's too hard for him. The Bible tells us all things are possible to God. Now you and I will kind of go, oh yeah, that seems, that seems logical. But do you know there's also scriptures that says all things are possible to them that believe? What a team. We get to join with God by our faith and believe in him and know that all things are possible with him. Well, if all things are possible with him and my faith is in him, then all things are possible with me. Amen. Um, he goes on to say, uh, he wants to come alongside us and share his strength. Remember, we studied this couple days ago that in our weaknesses, he's made strong. The joy, here's another scripture, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Strength. Listen, if I, if I have confidence in him and I know he can't fail, then I ought to walk around in joy. Praise God, my victory is, is here. Amen. Uh, he goes on to say, um, I know things that look impossible to you. Well, quit looking in the natural. Remember in Ephesians chapter 2, it says that he raised us up and seated us at his, the right hand of God the Father in heavenly places in him. That, it doesn't say someday he's going to in the great by and by, but spiritually right now, that's your rightful position at the right hand of God the Father in heavenly places. Quit looking th at things in the natural. Begin to look at things in from the spiritual, from his eyes, from that vantage point, seated at the right hand of God the Father in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Bible also tells us in Corinthians that the things that we see are temporal, but the things that we can't see are eternal. Focus on the eternal. Amen. And then we find that in John chapter 14 and verse 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the... Um, Hang on. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said. That is, again, John chapter uh, 14, verse 26. Now look in John chapter 16 and verse 13. 
It says, however, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you uh, into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So in other words, he wants to help you. God has done everything he can to help you. Um, he's given us the Holy Spirit. You need power? Guess what? The Bible says in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he will endue you with power. You see right here it says that I'm going to give you the helper, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And through him you'll receive power. God wants to help you, friend. You can argue with that all you want to, but it's a fact. He wants to help you. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.